Hi, Kat. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I know you're really limited on time, so I'll just jump right into it. I am. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking time. I appreciate it. So, it seemed to be a real emotional journey for you over the past few months. How did you keep up your spirits week after week? You know, it was just so great to have, to be able to have my family come out here every week and really boost the morale and give me some time to you know, relax and just be normal and <laughs> their support, you know, carried me through the entire thing, especially my boyfriend and my and my sister, since they consistently came out every single week for me. And that was just something that was priceless for me. And, and also keeping my own schedule out here with working out and, and eating right and staying healthy and getting enough sleep. That was, that's how I did it. So the outpouring of support for you from Scranton, and I mean the whole county, the whole state, <laughs> was just tremendous. I mean, were you surprised at all of the reaction? It was just immense. It was over. It was like excitingly overwhelming. I would hate to say that I, I was because I always believed that I had a really good fan base in, especially North Dakota. But I was surprised to feel all that love, and it really did seem like the entire state got behind it at some point. And watching all of the the newscasts that were happening and all the scene cat shirts were amazing and seeing my grandpa's yard with the big sign that was just something that lifted me up to, to see and it really filled my heart up what was the first thing you did after walking off stage last tuesday <laughs> have a beer can i say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely can i ask what kind <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Miller Lite girl. I think I felt like I totally earned it last Tuesday, absolutely. But the other thing was just, you know, to sit down and eat a meal with my family. It was just nice to have them here and eat and just, like, decompress. And, and, you know, we watched it back because on here on the West Coast, it, by the time I get home, we can watch it again on television. So that's what we did. So you posted on Facebook right after that that you're going to be working on a record deal. Can you give us any hints about what's to come? everybody a few weeks back and no matter how far I went but I would definitely do my best to stay headstrong in the business and record a record and start writing and make that happen I, I just I'm going to put myself on a really tight timeline and try to have a single out there within the next six months or so and, and definitely start playing shows so I do plan to come to North Dakota for the western side for a big welcome home concert middle of August we're not confirmed yet, but that's what we're working on. So did you have any musical celebrities reach out to you, maybe wanted to sing together, or maybe a record? Not yet, that? but I was, I got such an awesome note or message from Reba McIntyre. And she just said she really enjoyed what I did on the show, and she was really proud, and she couldn't wait to meet me someday. What was your favorite moment overall throughout the whole thing? Favorite moment overall? I, everything was my favorite. <laughs> Every week was my favorite. It was it was really awesome to have that last performance on that Monday that I sang two songs. I guess it really stands out to me that the kids I nanny got to come out for that show and I got to sing a song to them. And that meant so much to me for them to come out because they're the reason why I auditioned for the show in, in the first place. What kinds of things did you and Adam Levine talk about, like, off the air? He's such a goofball. My favorite story behind the scenes is one day we were rehearsing and we were both really exhausted and burnt out. So he jumped behind the drums and, and he started playing a Metallica song and, and, and I knew it. So I, I sang and he played the drums and the band chimed in and we played a Metallica tune. <laughs> he was um, a goofball. He's a school fault, so it was hard for him to focus at any point behind the scenes. <laughs> what do you think the biggest thing was that you learned about yourself from this journey? Oh, well, I think unexpectedly, unexpectedly, the biggest thing that I 
I had to go through was just getting a tough skin and taking a lot of criticism from on social media and you know it just came out of nowhere and I guess I wasn't prepared for that so I think that's the biggest takeaway for me personally is just how to do that and, and handle it and, and ignore it and just keep moving on and just keep my confidence up. We did an interview with your dad a few weeks ago and he said that he wasn't surprised really at all that you made it so far because he always had high expectations for you. So what what kinds of things would he would he tell you right before you go on stage? Oh, he's he's like the king of one liner. So it would always be like before the blinds. He 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 said to me the last thing he said was turn all four. <laughs> Which meant, you know, get a four chair turn. And you know, he would just email me these, these little things like, you know, dream it, do it, you're doing a great job. And just always just giving me the words of confidence that he'd always given me since I was a child. And he's always supported the music business for me. So it was always nice to hear from him. And he got to come out, I think, three times. And so it was really nice to see him in person before and after the show for him to just, you know, give me a hug and say, good luck and, and do well. Do what you do and do it well. He'd always say that. So what do you hope for, for your future? You know, I, again, I would like to continue in the music industry again after I took a huge break and and became a nanny. I, I think I'm going to depart from the nanny job and try to go back into it and, and stay relevant as long as I can and, and share new music with the fans that I had before the show and mm -hmm. now all these new fans that I gained while being on the show. So yeah, it was definitely a few years since your your album with Scarlet Hayes. Between that time and now, were you just touring with Dirty Word? I didn't do anything. I actually, you know, got out of the business altogether, became a nanny. And why, then, did, um, why did that happen? I had vocal surgery. I um I came down I had a cyst on my left vocal cord uh, in 2011 and it just put an end to everything I had to stop touring I needed medical attention and I I I had surgery and I had to recover which you know I took me a good six months to get strong again as a singer and I worked on just rehabbing the voice and. And then I just, I was nannying and I, I loved it. So I just did that full time. And then in the past year, only one year I was with 30 Word. Actually not even, it was like nine months where I started doing shows with them and just being a weekend warrior with that band and playing club shows and, but nannying during the day. I heard that you tried out for American Idol like 10 years ago. Uh -huh. What do you think was the difference between that and what you did on The Voice? I think the biggest difference what is the morale what and what they stand for on their you know their message for for the voice they they are they're a positive show as opposed to you know this maybe a little bit more like circus entertainment they really lift you up in this show and they want you to do well down to the very person that drives you to the studio every day you know they they weren't out to make fun of you or make you know a joke out of you or anything like yeah. that they would legitimately wanted you to do well as a singing contestant on their show and and that felt good to to know that it was never going to be anything negative or something i didn't want to be portrayed as on television again thank you so much i really appreciate your time and you know, best thank of you. luck and we'll see you back here in a few months Absolutely, and we're, we're shooting for mid-August, and we're probably going to try to do it in Medora, just so you know, but we're going to, we're still confirming that. Thanks, Bryce. Yep, take care. Safe travel.